Hey everybody, I'm Leon, sometimes going by Lexman, and I'm a sound designer at Bohemia Interactive. In the second part of our introduction to Infusion's audio editor, we are going to have a closer look at signals. Let's get the most confusing part out of the way first and talk about terminology. You see, the word signal can describe two things in the context of the Infusion engine. On one hand, Signals can refer to numeric data that is stored on entities in our game world. An example for this would be the hatches on the BTR7T. Whether they are opened or not is stored as a signal ranging from 0 to 1 on the vehicle. Other systems of the game can then access the signal, for example in order to animate the hatches according to their state. Let's call these signals game signals. On the other hand, a signal also refers to a file type which can be used in the audio editor in order to perform mathematical and logical calculations. The results of these can then be used in order to steer the behavior of other nodes within the audio editor. You might have guessed it already. This is the kind of signal that we are going to talk about. Let's get started by opening up the audio editor and then clicking on File, New, Signal. A prompt will appear and ask us to name our signal file and choose a location to save it to. Once we've done so, the signal editor appears. It looks pretty much identical to the regular audio editor interface, with the exception of having a different set of available nodes. We will definitely not cover all nodes today, and the selection is sure to expand in the future, so check out the signal editor node overview linked in the description below. In order to understand the basic idea of the signal editor, we are going to do a bit of maths. Our first goal is to multiply two different values. We are going to look for the value node in the node selection and click it twice. Sure enough, two nodes appeared. You'll see that the log console tells us that the nodes are not connected to anything. Messages like these will pop up a lot and can usually be ignored as we are going to connect them in a second. We can get rid of the message by clicking on Clear Console. Since it's our goal to multiply two values, we are again taking a look at the node selection and add a MUL node, short for multiply, and connect it to the output ports of our two value nodes. Nice! We created our first multiplication in the signal editor. However, what exactly are we multiplying? Let's find out by clicking on one of the value nodes. The node's item detail reveals that it's currently using the default value of 0. Let's change its value to 2. And while we're at it, let's also rename the node to 2, so we don't have to look up its value every time. We're doing the same with the other value node, but how about we use 4 instead of 2? If my primary school education doesn't fail me, our result should be 8. But how do we confirm this? Easy! We can enable the debug mode by either clicking on Debug and then Start Debugging or simply by pressing F5. And looky here, 2 times 4 seems to be 8, indeed. At this point we have a very useful signal that multiplies 2 and 4. A piece of art, really. So naturally we want to use it in one of our ACPs. To do so, we first have to save our signal. Then we want to open the ACP that we intend to use the signal in. How about the ACP we created in a previous session? Once the ACP is opened, we can simply use the resource browser to navigate to our signal and drag and drop it into the scene. Oh boy, our signal seems to be no more than a blue blob. Well, yes, a crucial element is missing. Our signal needs to be told what values should actually be available to be used in the audio editor. In order to do so, we need to get back into our signal. Which, by the way, can also be done by just double-clicking it inside the audio editor. Once opened, we are going to add an output node. Let's move it a bit to the right and connect it with the output of the multiply node, so that it transfers its value. We save our signal again and have another look into our ACP. And there it is. Our signal now has an output node. Let's connect our signal output to the pitch input of our bank. When previewing the sound, 
it should now sound a lot more high-pitched than before, given that the default value is 1 and our signal always returns 8. But a signal that always multiplies the same two numbers isn't really helpful, is it? So how about we make the signal a bit more generic, so we can multiply different values in different ACPs. Let's head back into our signal and delete the static value nodes. This time, we create two input nodes and move them a bit to the left. Just like the output nodes, these input nodes will show up on our signal, only that these ones are not used for outputting data, but rather receiving it from other nodes. Let's rename them. For example, input underscore one and input underscore two. And we connect them to the multiply node. All right, now we save our signal again and head back into our ACP. The only thing missing now are values that our ACP can hand over to our signal. The simplest way to add them is by using a constant node, as it allows us to define static values and use them throughout our ACP. So let's create one. It will be empty by default, but we can add values by selecting it and then clicking on the plus symbol next to constant values in the item detail window. We have two inputs in our signal, so let's create two constant values. We're gonna go with two and four again. Oh, and we can also name our constant values by changing the key attribute. For the sake of consistency, I recommend naming the constant values like the signal inputs they are going to be connected to. In our case, input underscore one and input underscore two. Once we've done that, all that's left to do is to connect the constants to our signal inputs. When previewing the sound now, it should sound the same as before, as we are again multiplying two by four. If we want to be really sure about it, we can also confirm that by enabling the debug mode just as we did in the signal editor, by simply pressing F5. And indeed, our pitch input shows us the value 8. We've come a long way now, haven't we? We are now able to create a signal, input data from our ACP into it, have it do something with this data, and then output the result in order to be used within our ACP. This pretty much covers all the basics of the signal editor. If there's anything to add, then that, as of now, a signal file can only be used once within an ACP. But we're not quite done here yet. Let's ask ourselves a spicy question. How do we actually connect events in the game with the sounds we create? For example, we might want to change the sound of a car's engine as its RPM increases. Or we might want to blend between different sounds depending on an in-game parameter, like the speed of our character. Well, remember how we talked about that the term signal refers to two different things in the Infusion engine? And how the other use of the term was it to describe numeric data stored in entities so that other systems can use it? Well, guess what? The audio editor is one of these systems that can access these game signals. And where exactly? You might have guessed it, in our signal files. The way accessing game signals in our signal files works is absolutely straightforward. All we have to do is to create an input node and name it exactly like the game signal. Done! If a game signal with the corresponding name is found on an entity, the input node will output its value, which can then be used just like the inputs we defined before. If no corresponding game signal is found, a default value will be used which is usually zero. That being said, different entity types will have access to different game signals. To find out which signals are available on an entity, we can switch to the game mode and open the Diag menu by pressing Windows and Alt. Here, we use the arrow keys to navigate to Sounds, Sound System and set Signals Debug to True. We can now either switch through closed by entities or use the search bar to find a specific one. The entity's available signals will be displayed on the left-hand side of the screen. Another important and very useful feature is the simulation of signals behavior directly within the audio editor. 
I'm gonna open a vehicle engine ACP for showcasing this. When clicking on a signal, we can see that all its inputs are listed in the item detail window. Furthermore, we see that every listed input has the attributes name, value, min, max, and valrt. Aside from the name, all of them are solely used within the audio editor to preview the signal behavior. Value is the value that the signal currently returns. valrt is a slider we can use to change this return signal value within the range we specify with the min and max attributes. As we can see, the vehicle's engine RPM signal was set to have a minimum return value of 800 and a maximum return value of 6000. Let's preview the engine sound and use the ValRT slider to simulate a change in the engine RPM. And there we go! This is how we can simulate a change in signal behavior to preview the changes they do to our sound. And that's it for now. So, thanks and have a good one. <laughs>